Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmasso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly at tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we are discussing the latest version of the Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean Chronograph. This is the 600-meter Seamaster Professional with caliber 9900. So the watch, 45.5 millimeters in diameter in stainless steel is 19.1 millimeters thickened from lug tip to lug tip, 52 millimeters with a 22 millimeter spacing between the lugs. Now this is the master chronometer generation of the watch, which means it is the latest. But every version of the 45 and a half millimeter chronograph sits massive on the wrist. It fits me, I could wear it, it's not gonna move around unduly, and it's not even that broad lug to lug for the size of the case, but I do recommend you have a wrist of at least 17 centimeters circumference before wearing this, especially given the thickness and the mass of the watch, you need a big wrist to match. The strap handsomely complements the orange highlights of the dial and the bezel, and you can see it has a textile pattern, though it's made entirely of rubber. It has a contrasting rubber stitch. You can see on the underside we have black rubber top and bottom with an orange border. It's quite attractive. You'll appreciate this is a brand new Omega Factory strap. And then we have the Omega Clasp. It's been a long running and successful one. You can see it includes a combination of polished highlights and satin, twin triggers to release it so it can't pop open accidentally. It's not friction fit. And then of course you've got this system that I always called a minderless system because you don't have strap minders. Like these are strap minders. This watch doesn't need those because extra length tucks underneath the clasp and the strap for a very clean look. Taking a quick look at the case, it's very familiar to Omega fans. Liar style lugs, we've known them since the first half of the 1960s. Inward bevels as well as outward bevels. And the outer bevels are polished. There's a polished bevel that runs lengthwise. You can see we have a little bit of a shear guard structure for the shouldered chronograph pushers and the crown that's designed to protect from shearing and impact. And it should be mentioned that these are not screw down chronograph pushers. Even though the watch is 600 meters water resistant, they do not have a screw down function. They have shoulders to prevent them against accidental displacement laterally so they don't work their way loose or get damaged, but you can use them without screwing them in or out. Now the crown does screw down, the watch is 600 meters water resistant, and you can see it features a helium escape valve for saturation divers. What you do is you open the helium escape valve before or a dive that would involve saturation diving. And when the internal pressure within the watch exceeds external by two to three bar. If you've opened the valve previously, it will internally open itself and release any helium that may have accumulated in the watch, which prevents blowing out the sapphires and compromising the seals. The bezel is probably the most refined bezel I felt on an Omega Diver. They tend to be very gritty and sharp. This has a little bit more of I would say a refined glide to it, like a Cartier, Calibre de Cartier diver, a 50 fathoms or a Rolex dive watch. Now what we have here is mostly a ceramic insert, but the first 15 minutes are actually orange rubber. And over time, this has proven to wear quite well and last. The dial, as well as bezel, are abundantly loomed. You can see the bezel pearl and the broad arrow minute hand are both green, so it's easy to read your dive time at a glance. Also note that even the sub-register hands feature loom, and you can see that there are coaxial sub-register hands over at three o'clock. The idea being you have chronograph minutes and chronograph hours on one register to create a more symmetrical and compact dial. We also feature, and you can just see it underneath the hands, a zirconium oxide ceramic polished dial. It gives you a lot of the beauty and durability of enamel without some of the fragility and cost that can come with enamel. The hands are rhodium plated white gold. You ask why rhodium on white gold? Because white gold is not white. Rhodium is. So they are gold, but rhodium is used to make them whiter. Now we also have a number of subsidiary setting functions. If you wish, there is a time zone function that you can activate while the watch is still keeping time. The chronograph is still ticking. Notice I'm not displacing the minute hand. This is great for traveling. Now I can also pull the crown out all the way. Now I activate hacking or stop seconds. You can time an event up to 60 minutes 
using the bezel alongside the minutes register so you can time two events simultaneously. Now you turn the watch over, and by the way, I should mention we have a vertical clutch, which means the chronograph starts without any jump. There's no play in a vertical clutch. You can also leave the chronograph running full time with a vertical clutch, and there's no damage or danger to the watch from doing so. Now we also have a column wheel function selector, which you can see through the skeletonized bridge. It's a little bit of a modified crenellated wheel, but it is a column wheel. You know so, because it says so. And it feels good, it looks good, it sounds good. We have a set of spiral arabesque Cote de Genève. We have both black polished and actually blackened screws. We have a full balance bridge with a free sprung balance for shock tolerance. It is five position adjusted. It is a chronometer, but they actually adjust once more beyond the requirements of the ISO 3159, which regulates chronometers. This is a master chronometer. So as a fully cased up watch, it goes through six position tests for chronometry. It also goes through tests for winding efficiency, power reserve, water resistance, shock resistance, and anti-magnetism. And to that end, the watch has an anti-magnetic escapement and an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring. It beats away at 25,200 vibrations per hour, which is the swatch group standard for silicon hairsprings. It has a coaxial escapement, which you just barely see beneath the balance wheel, and that is a direct and indirect impulse tangential contact escapement that improves power reserve, reduces maintenance requirements, and improves precision. The watch includes two mainspring barrels for a 60-hour power reserve, all of this pivoting on 54 joules. The advantage of two barrels isn't so much a long power reserve, although this is long-ish. It's a more even release of torque from maximum wind to minimum wind. So for example, this twin barrel watch doesn't have the big drop off in balance amplitude and mainspring torque that you get with one equivalently sized large barrel. Reach out to tmaso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.